In this lesson, you create floors and learn how to join floors to other concrete elements. Floors and walls can be joined with a standard join tool that was shown in module 4.3. Another option is to attach the top or base of a wall to a floor. If the slab is sloping, then the wall would attach to the slab and remain parametric. Go ahead and open up project A. This lesson continues from module 5.0. In this lesson, we're going to create a two-way spanning slab on our first floor and then learn how to join the floor to other structural members. Let's first begin by copying our slab from the ground floor to the first floor. To do this, we'll select our floor slab. On the Modify Floors context ribbon, you'll note here we have Copy to Clipboard. You can either click this tool here or you can use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl and C. The element has now been copied to the clipboard and we can then use the paste options. Notice here we have many different options to paste the element to different areas. In our case here, we're going to paste a line to selected levels. And here we want to paste this to 01 first floor. So here's our floor slab now pasted in. We need to make some modifications to our floor slab. This particular slab only needs to be 250 millimeters thick, and here this circular portion of the slab needs to be removed for an open atrium. Let's begin by creating a new floor type for our 250 millimeter thick slab. To do this, in the properties palette, we'll select edit type. In the type properties dialog box, we must ensure that we duplicate this slab. Of course, if we just start to edit this, that would then change all of the slabs that are 300 mil thick. So in this case, we'll select duplicate. And here we can simply just edit this and this will be 250. Now, another thing to remember is this is just a name. This won't physically change the slab. To physically change the slab, we'll need to select the edit button adjacent to structure. So let's go ahead and select edit. And in the edit assembly dialog box, I can then leave all the materials and the functions the same, but here I can just simply change the thickness to 250. I'll then select OK, and OK again to the Type Properties dialog box, and you'll now see that we have a 250mm thick slab. Of course, we can now see that the model has in fact changed. OK, so we now need to edit this slab. To do this, I'll select the slab in 3D, and notice on the context ribbon, we can edit the boundary. Now, I could edit this in 3D, but it would be easier for me to see this on the first floor plane. So in the project browser, under structural plans, let's double click on 01 first. So we can now see a plan view of our floor slab and our boundary. So what we want to do here is simply delete the arcs and through our atrium area, the floor is actually going to follow this curvature here. Now to do this, we'll go to our context ribbon and in the draw panel, we'll select pick lines. We need to have an offset of 175 millimeters from this. And then I can simply pick the curve like so. And then to tidy this up, again on the context ribbon, I can use trim extend to corner. I'll select the bits I want to keep, which is these here and also these here. Now, if we inspect the formwork here, this is going to be quite complicated. So we're going to make some changes to this just to make this construction a little bit more practical. So what we're going to do is actually delete that arc. And now we'll use a slightly more practical construction approach. So we'll have the slab ending on the end of the line here. We can grip edit this back. And we'll do the same thing for our column. So again, I can draw a little line in here and I'll just use trim extend to corner just to extend that out here. And now we can draw a curve between the end point of this line here and the end point of this line here. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to select center ends arc. I'll pick the center of my curve in here. I'll then select the end point of my column and I can construct this arc round and what I'm going to do is stop it approximately here, like so. And now what I'd like to do is extend this straight line a bit further along. 
Now notice here, I can just drag this and it will remain perpendicular. Now I might choose to now take a straight line from here and then trim it at the intersection. So here we can use line. Of course, because I'm taking it from a quadrant, that's naturally going to be tangential there. And we can then just simply trim, extend to corner. So again here, we'll select the bits we want to keep. And here we have a very similar sort of boundary, but you can see it's going to be much easier to construct the slab. Okay, so we can then go ahead and select the green tick to finalize the floor slab. Now we notice here that Revit has detected we have structural walls that seem to terminate under the slab. So it's given us the option here to attach those walls to the underside of the slab. In this example, I'm going to select Don't Attach. And we'll now inspect our slab in 3D. So we'll go into the 3D view and we can now see our slab in place. Now, of course, here you'll notice that these walls are actually supposed to terminate on the soffit of the slab. So what we're going to do here is select all of these walls. So I'm just going to use a crossing window like this to select those walls there. I'll also select these walls in here. I'm doing that by holding down the control key. Now, of course, here I've probably got multiple elements selected, including this structural opening here. So we'll filter this. We'll go up to the context ribbon and select filter. In this example here, I just want the walls. And there they are. And now on the context ribbon, you'll note that I have attach top base. And then I have the reciprocal detach top base. Now, if I use this, it's going to physically attach the walls to the underside of the slab. And as you can see in the tool tip here, if we did have a domestic structure with a gable end, again, that wall would then form the gable end when we attach it to the roof. In this case, we'll use attach top base. On the options bar, I can decide whether I'm actually attaching the top or the base. So here I want to attach uh, the top of the wall. And then I can select my floor slab. And you'll notice that most of the elements have attached. I'll just need to probably unattach this one here. This one needs some work because you'll see that the wall isn't actually the right shape. We'll refine and fix that a bit later on. Now, another thing we'll need to do is make sure that these floor slabs and walls are in fact joined. To do this, I'll select the Modify ribbon. And on the Modify ribbon, you'll note we have Join. I want to utilize Multiple Join. So I'm going to make sure that I check Multiple Join on the Options bar. And I'll begin here by selecting what I want to join to, which is going to be the ground floor slab. And then I'm going to use a crossing window that will cut through all of these elements. I'll repeat that for this slab here. So I'll select that slab and again, a crossing window through all of the elements. And you can now see very efficiently, all of those walls have been joined to the slabs. Of course, not only does that make the materials accurate and the volumes accurate, but it would also make the drawings accurate as well. OK, so that concludes this lesson for Module 5.1. Make sure that you save your projects ready for Module 5.2.